Okay, I have a problem here from MIT Integration B2016. Problem number 10. We have the integral from infinity to zero of x cubed times e to the minus x squared dx. Okay, the very first thing that I thought of was with this e to the minus x squared, that looks like the Gaussian integral. And then I've messed with it a little bit and I found I don't really have a good way to incorporate that just because we have this x cubed and we need to deal with this first. So then I moved on to u substitution and we could I had a couple different ways. We could enter, we could call our u the whole minus x squared, but I found it actually might be better if we just say u is x squared and do it this way. So doing that, taking the derivative, du is gonna be two x. Before I do my u substitution, I'm just gonna rewrite this first. So what I'll do is I'm gonna put a two x dx over here just to set up our u substitution. But then doing that, we want, we still have an x cubed here, so let's write this as half x squared. Noticing half x squared times 2x is x cubed. And then now I'll make my substitution. And the nice benefit of using x squared here instead of minus x squared is our bounds won't change. So putting in infinity, we get infinity. Putting in zero, we still have a zero. I'm gonna take this half out front, I think, and then x squared is u, e to the minus u, and then this piece here is our du. And then from here, this is set up perfectly for integration by parts. We know if we use integration by parts, when we differentiate u, it'll be one, then zero, and it's gonna terminate pretty quick and be fairly easy. But what I wanna do is, I've done that a bunch of times, so I'm gonna to try to do something a little different, and I think this is a little quicker too. What I wanna point out is the similarity between this integral and the gamma function. Okay, so we have our definition of the gamma function over here on the right. You notice, so in, in this, the way we have this, it's the variable is t. The variable here is u, but it doesn't matter if it's a definite integral. We have the same limits, infinity to zero. This e to, the, e to the minus u and e to the minus t is exactly the same here. Uh, what we want to deal with is this exponent on this t variable. Here on our u, we have a one. But then you might be thinking, okay, what does this do for us? Because it just gets us this crazy gamma. What are we going to do with that? Well, we have this relationship to the factorial that we can use. So what we can do is if we can get this exactly into the form of the gamma function, we can relate it to the factorial, we know how to calculate the factorial, and then we'll be done. So I'm gonna do to get this just to be explicit and use the gamma function, I'm gonna rewrite this. So we're gonna have half infinity to zero, and then on our u, we want it in this z minus one form. So one can be written as two minus one, e to the minus u du. So then what we've done is we've said our z value in this equation is two. And then if our z value is two, then we have the gamma function, we have the gamma of two. So then we can rewrite this again as just half gamma of two. Now our relationship to the factorial, this is only good, we can only use this for positive integers, but two is a positive integer. So then we can just put this in terms of a factorial, we can write this as a half times two minus one, which is just one factorial, but one factorial is just one, and so our answer is gonna be just one half. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting problem. I think we'll do more, pro more videos on the gamma function in the future. Also, I have a quiz on the gamma function. It's a few years old, so it probably needs some things added or updated, but I'll provide a link in the description of that. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.